things is not magic, but it connects us to each other, to everything. Billions of devices, trillions of messages, predicting downtime, making workplaces safer, and what is most precious, preserved. Yet the world whispers, give us more. Make it simple, smart, and secure, so we can make whatever we dare to think of possible. The Internet of Things moves us, gives us knowledge, creates, brings the future into the now. It is glorious and powerful, and it will change things. But it is not magic. The magic is what you make of it. Good morning. My name is Sam George. Uh, I lead Azure IoT at Microsoft. And it's great to be back here at Solution World Congress. We've been coming for, I believe it's five years now, and it's always a wonderful thing to see all of the solutions that are on exhibit and to hear all of the great transformations that are happening all across the industry. So we're clearly in a new era of digitization. We're clearly in a new era of digitization. This is happening across industries. And you see all of that being represented outside in the demo booth, um, in the news that happens every single day. Every industry is being transformed by a set of what we like to think of as catalytic innovations. And these catalytic innovations are enabling sets of new opportunities across virtually every industry on the planet. You know, we started our journey in cloud, which gave the world unlimited compute resources, and then IoT came along. And of course, IoT had been around for a long time. It was called machine to machine, but cloud transformed IoT. It made it so that I didn't have to build a data center and I had built-in services that I could take advantage of if I wanted to build a solution. And then of course, that helped businesses be able to sense everything that was happening in the physical world. As IoT got going, edge computing and AI came along. And edge computing, in a lot of ways, wound up being an optimization to IoT because it enabled you to take those same workloads that were running in the cloud and distribute those out and run those right on devices. You know, at Microsoft, we very much believe in this mission that our CEO talks about of empowering an intelligent cloud and an intelligent edge. Both are very important, and they really are harmonizing. You're seeing that accelerate. So many of the solutions that we're highlighting outside and here today are already not only taking advantage of IoT, but are now taking advantage of AI right, running right on edge computing devices. And then just like the last session, for those that heard that, that digital twins is becoming a important new part of the palette for these digital transformations because it forms the skeleton and the, um, the organizing solution uh, framework for all of these different digital feedback loops. What we see is that each of those digital, uh, or those new capabilities are enabling customers to form something we call a digital feedback loop. A digital feedback loop is capturing data from devices, being able to understand and synthesize that, and then being able to drive informed action. And the most important part of that is the loop part, because what you start out doing in IoT and edge computing and AI is very rarely what you end up doing. You know, the first solution <clears throat> leads to more questions, which leads to more uh, solutions, which leads to more questions. And it goes around and around, and you get smarter as you go. Some of our very earliest customers that started out doing predictive maintenance have now completely transformed their supply chain, supply chain and their service industry that's not what they started out to do, but it's what they ended up doing as at each turn through this digital feedback loop. So a great example is one of our customers that I'd like to briefly highlight is Buhler. And Buhler does food processing, um, and approximately 70% of the world's food supply goes through these machines at industrial grade throughput. And one of the challenges they were facing was how do I find 
toxins in the food supply right at the point where it's being sorted. Before it goes and gets into the food supply, before it turns into food products and gets distributed. So Buller has made many time, has gone many times through this digital feedback loop, and this is what they've done. supplier of the solutions in the food processing industry. Buehler Insights is a cloud-based platform. Leveraging the power of IoT, machine learning, and AI, we're able to provide operational efficiencies, cost savings, and most importantly, better products than ever before. Beneath the umbrella of the Buehler Insights platform, we have a portfolio of digital services. Our optical sorting technology uses sensors to take a snapshot of the grain. We split that image up into pixels and analyze each individual pixel. Image processing techniques and algorithms make the decision whether that pixel is good or bad, then we can inject the defect. And all of this happens at industrial grade throughput of 15 tons an hour. Smartphone technology to analyze samples and enables our customers to make accurate measurements of the material running in their process line to maintain optimal efficiency. We use machine learning to aggregate activity from all of our social media channels, give our customers really early intelligence on food safety outbreaks and intersections. Today, we're working on technologies like blockchain. We have problems with food authenticity, traceability. Consumers are demanding more transparency of the food value chain. And blockchain is an enabler to make this happen. Microsoft and Bula have a common goal to make the world a better place. And it's this shared mission that truly bonds us in this journey together. So in that particular example, when Bula first got that working, they were collecting uh, and analyzing samples they produced a machine learning model in the cloud. That same machine learning model is now running directly on those devices, analyzing all of those samples. And then it's simply um, saving those images and the data that it collects and then bulk uploading that. And so there's this digital feedback loop for AI as well. Um, tremendous amount of customer mom momentum. We're really seeing IoT reaching a tipping point. These and thousands of other customers are already taking advantage of the solutions that we build and the solutions that are more importantly being powered um, by our partner ecosystem. Because in IoT, it is not a winner-take-all market. It is very much one of partnerships and ecosystems because these technologies are gonna touch every business on the planet. Now what's interesting and what we wanted to share is that if you look at the technology adoption life cycle, many of the customers, including Buhler that you just saw, they really fall into the innovators and the early adopters category. And so as we s we're seeing IoT starting to reach a tipping point where the early majority and the technology adoption life cycle is starting to show up and they want solutions that are very easy to use, that are turnkey, that integrate well, and a lot of them don't have deep technical expertise. And of course, the chasm and crossing the chasm happens between the early adopters and the early majority. So part of what I'm gonna be talking about today is some of the insights that we've gained and the things that we're doing about that to enable this uh, mainstream motion that IoT is going through right now. We recently did an IoT uh, signals uh, research report and what we did is we were, went around and sampled 3,200 different IoT business decision makers across the planet in six different regions and we asked them all sorts of questions. How are things going in IoT? What are you doing? What are your challenges? And there's a great report, it's online. And what we found was that there were these sort of three key, key distilled things that we found. Number one is that IoT is now broadly seen as critical to businesses' success. That was clear, and that's actually on the rise. That's rising to 94% over the next two years. Almost half were citing a lack of technical, skilled workers for IoT solutions as a challenge to adoption. So we're running out of talented cloud solution developers and IoT and edge developers. And then 97% said security was top of mind, but one of the alarming things that we also heard was that that wasn't holding anyone back. And so that really 
told us that we need to make security a pit of success and not one that's fraught with peril. So what we took away from this first one that all of these companies saw IoT as critical to success was that we as technology providers need to provide incredibly comprehensive IoT services to empower the mission of these companies. And over the last five years, we've built what we feel is the most comprehensive and competitive IoT platform and set of capabilities in the industry, everywhere from rich IoT and edge support to Azure services for IoT to very easy to use SaaS offerings to vertically specialized offerings that we provide to the partners in each one of those verticals. And there's, a, there's one that I want to highlight in particular, and that's our IoT Hub device, uh, IoT Hub service as well as our device provisioning service. This is now connected to millions of devices, growing to billions of devices, sending trillions of messages, and provisioning devices very, very quickly. What I wanted to do to talk about the adoption of services like that and the need for that is to welcome up one of our customers, Maersk, and have them talk a little bit about what's happening in the shipping industry and the digital transformation we see there. And for that, I'd like to welcome up Mazadik and Siddhartha. Come on up, gentlemen. Great. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. It's great to, great to you see you. Me. So, Mazadik, tell us a little bit about the shipping industry and the digital transformation that's happening in it. To start with, uh, we work in Maersk. Uh, it's a transport and logistic company. Maersk is one of the largest container transportation business, uh, responsible for 20% of the global trade. Shipping is a very old industry. Mm. And containerization has made it very efficient, so much so that the transportation of a shirt from Bangladesh to, to Europe, it costs less than 50 cents. Mm. But once container reaches the final port, the amount of paper handling around that at the final destination, uh, the cost around it is extremely higher because of the inefficient process that we have on the import side. So what we want to do it is our ambition is to strengthen our logistic services mm. and make things easier for our customers by extending the offerings, not just limited to liner transportation, but going beyond and delivering the cargo all the way to, to the destination. What we are doing also is taking advantage of the IoT solution mm -hmm. in combination with cloud in order to create the visibility, the much needed visibility within the transport and logistics space. That makes sense. Now Siddhartha, <coughs> you're actually, your teams are actually building this and connecting all these containers. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey um, and, and, and adopting these technologies and the benefits that you've seen. At Maersk, we have a solution we call uh, remote container management. Mm -hmm. We have close to 400,000 repair containers and uh, 3.6 million dry containers. So we started our digitalization journey with the repair containers. We connect all these repairs and we monitor the temperature and uh, humidity, CO2 to inside these containers. Right. And we were on this journey for a couple of years, but we were on uh, kind of an on-prem solution, inefficient. We were not able to provide that level of visibility that our customers would expect. So recently we migrated to Azure, uh, mm -hmm. the whole solution. We created a kind of a state of art IoT platform which yeah. is based on IoT Hub and device provisioning services uh -huh. kind of integrated into it. And we use a lot of other uh, Azure components to process data coming from these uh, 400,000 devices. This platform will uh, kind of uh, put up, a, uh, you can say, an integrated solution for connecting all our assets. We are into the ports, we are into the vessels. Yeah. We, we move the, uh, our containers on the trucks and so on. So this platform solution would be an integrated solution where we'll be getting data from all these uh, devices and yeah. uh, it will provide an end-to-end -end visibility into our customer supply chain. So if a customer is shipping something from their warehouse to warehouse, this solution would be able to provide an end-to-end -end visibility. See it the whole time. And, and obviously, you're running a global operation. And so these containers, as they're connected, the refrigeration units, um, at some points they're connecting to you know one IoT hub, to another port they're connecting to another. and so. Uh, what was your experience as you transitioned from that on-prem solution to the cloud? You know, how many of these devices did you wind up provisioning and how long did that take? So we have 400,000 devices out in the field. They uh -huh. could be in the terminals on different vessels. Uh, some some uh, could be in the warehouses or uh, uh, on the road in the trucks and so on. 
and uh, because they are GSM enabled devices, so changing the endpoint into kind of a phase wise manner could have taken longer yeah. and we would have had to have a kind of a, uh, two solutions running in parallel. So the only option we had was to kind of cut it in one shot and uh, oh. we did it over a weekend. Uh, it was done in eight hours, but uh, the good thing was that uh, from eight hours of downtime, we were able to provision all the devices in 25 minutes and process all the data in less than half an hour uh, so, from so all these 400,000 devices. 400,000 of these containers in 25 minutes. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. And uh, we are moving our journey into the dry containers and so on, so there is definitely much more to come. That's excellent. Well, it's an excellent story, and uh, thank you for your support, and we look forward to the great things we'll do together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Thanks for being here. Great. So let's go on to our next. Um, the other thing that we mentioned was that um, about half of companies that we talked to of these 3,200 respondents um, cited lack of technical skills as something that was holding them back. And what that said to us was that we need to provide solutions that enable incredibly rapid application development without any cloud application skills. You know, right now worldwide there's about a deficit of about two million cloud solution developers. And so, you know, the world is really calling for technologies that speed things up and then enable you to connect to solutions uh, to take advantage of IoT without requiring that particular skill. So a year ago, here at Solution World Congress, we announced uh, Azure IoT Central, which is our IoT SaaS application platform that we build on top of all of those Azure services, including IoT Hub, and the device provisioning service that Merce was just, was just talking about. It's great to see all of the adoption that's been happening and the solution builders that are building on top of it. And today we're announcing a broad set of new capabilities, again, all fully managed. White labeling so that you can make IoT Central look like your own solution. We don't want IoT Central really to be visible. We want your solution to shine through with your own personal brand or if you're a partner for your customer's brand. Because IoT Central is very much an offering for partners to also do their best work. We're announcing 11 industry templates that are highly specialized for different industries. These are intended for partners to be able to take and accelerate their journey in providing these connected solutions. We're announcing Azure IoT Edge support, so now you can take our industry-leading edge offering and run AI, um, Azure services, and connect directly and manage those right through IoT Central. We're announcing multi-tenancy support, so I can have a single application and thousands of tenants within that application, each with their own isolated devices, data, users, and roles. And you have one application that you can update, and it gets updated across all of those tenants. We're adding full API support, something we call IoT plug and play support, so you can take a device, plug it in, data just starts flowing with no code, and you get an immediate dashboard that pops up that you can customize and then simplified pricing. So there's a lot of things that we're doing here. And what we're doing in IoT Central is really helping our partners and helping the industry get ready for that mainstream wave that's most certainly coming. Now the best way to talk about this is through the lens um, of, of another very innovative uh, customer that we have, and that's C.H. Robinson. And they're undertaking a digital transformation of the logistics industry um, in partnership with us. So for that, I'd like to welcome up Chris Cutshaw. Chris, come on up. Great. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So tell us a little bit about C.H. Robinson and, and, and what you do. Sure. Uh, so C.H. Robinson, for those who don't know, is uh, one of the world's largest third-party logistics companies, or 3PLs for short. Uh, 2018, we had $17 billion in revenue, and we had 16,000 employees around the world delivering complex global solutions uh, in the supply chain realm. Uh, we've deployed and built a, a proprietary global single instance supply chain platform we call Navisphere that allows us, and more importantly our customers, the ability to manage, execute, and gain visibility to their supply chain in a very dynamic environment. Many of the world's largest brands, including Microsoft, yeah. utilize this platform. Uh, to gain insights and see where their supply, where their inventory is at, in a um, at, at rest or in motion throughout a dynamic network. So um, maybe you could walk us through the Navisphere uh, Vision application, and then talk a little bit about 
you know, what it was um, with IoT Central that made that journey easier for you? Sure, so um, we are a, a third, we're a broker um, that we don't really own assets. So partnering with someone that would help us scale up thousands of devices was incredibly important. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to focus on scaling the product very quickly. So integrating with Azure IoT Central was incredibly easy. Uh, it really happened very quickly and built APIs directly into our application. And uh, it was very clear, simple pricing. So it was easy to understand, uh, very easy to uh, solve multi-tenancy. So we didn't want to build a solution 20 times. We wanted to build it <laughs> uh, once. And then uh, additionally, and probably most importantly, is the uh, security aspect of it. We're gonna have a bunch of global brands on top of this platform. So data security and privacy is incredibly important and that comes uh, built into Azure. So uh, we thought we'd show you the product uh, in, in real time and we just launched a bunch of products from Microsoft. So we're gonna show you that. This is Microsoft's supply chain globally visualized. We get thousands of shipments. Uh, sorry, and, there we go. And can we switch to the yeah. slides? Yeah. So we get thousands of uh, shipments uh, messages that are coming in and we're able to correlate that with our customers purchase and order data information so that when they go and look at the application or they listen to the application, they can see where their product is at at any time all the way down to a single part level. So on the screen you'll see us searching by a, the Surface Hub 2 which just launched and I can see exactly where that is in the supply chain. Additionally, we are uh, using uh, machine learning to predict ETAs and compare that to our customers' commitment dates so we can manage just the at-risk shipments and we're not managing the whole supply chain. We're also offering a bunch of metrics and uh, health uh, metrics on supply chain uh, health and able to show consistent problems in the supply chain so you can identify them and correct them. Also building in weather, news, traffic, socioeconomic events that allow you to see uh, global disruptions. So the integration with Azure IoT Central was very important to us. So we wanted to not only enhance our shipment tracking uh, visibility, but really measure a bunch of different dimensions that our customers want to see throughout the journey of a shipment. So the video you're seeing is actually us, we just built this application, seeing in real time how we configure and provision devices using Azure IoT Central, attaching it to some critical Xbox launch shipments that we just launched out of, out of China, and being able to monitor the temperature to ensure the component efficacy of the product. And then also, uh, where very important to us is security, so that when we see if they're um, either at the origin or destination, there's light within the container, someone has unauthorized or access to the product. And then additionally, we're looking for abrasions or damage or shock or tilt to see if the product was damaged at all from a claim liability perspective. So we built all that on Azure IoT Central and it's uh, really been a great partnership so far. That's great. So then your, your existing Navisphere Vision application was really unchanged. You were just using IoT Central to manage all of those devices and then send the data directly into your application. Correct. That's Correct. awesome. Yeah, great. awesome. All right, well all thank right. you so yeah, much for, for being here. Yep. We appreciate the partnership. Thank you. Thank you. The last topic that I wanted to cover was around security. Of course, security is very much on everyone's mind as it should be, um, like it was in our samples. It was 97%, not quite sure who the 3% was, but uh, everyone's worried about security and, and it is an important aspect of every IoT solution. So what this told us was that, you know, IoT security can be frankly overwhelming because you've got an intensely heterogeneous set of devices and edge computing devices that are being connected to central solutions. You've got a set of cloud solutions that are powering these. And quite frankly, it's beyond the capa capacity um, of many organizations to understand the security posture of all of that. So we've been re working really hard to make that as turnkey and simple as possible. And this year, we announced uh, Azure Security Center for IoT. Now, Azure Security Center is, has, was already a solution that we have in Azure that monitors all of your cloud services, find issues, recommends remediations, and so if there's anything that you've done in your solution that might have a security implica Im implication, we alert you on that. So we extended this year Azure Security Center to IoT. So either with agents running on the device or monitoring the rem them remotely, you can now protect devices that are connected to your Azure solutions, whether it's tiny microcontrollers, whether it's IoT devices, whether it's edge workloads. So as an example, this is what Azure Security Center for IoT looks like. 
you get a set of recommendations as well as alerts. Now, recommendations are best practices, things that you should consider doing, locking down devices to certain IP addresses and things like that. But it's also alerts, like if something bad is happening in real time. For example, with Security Center for IoT, if you're monitoring devices or edge devices running workloads, and one of those devices suddenly wakes up, <coughs> opens up a network port to a known botnet, we will immediately flag that. Now we know that because we as Microsoft are monitoring security 24 seven worldwide. We're aware of everything that's happening on the planet as it relates to security. And so all of that information is then surfaced through Azure Security Center and made available for IoT. So for example, if that device gets infected with that botnet, you can immediately detect that and quarantine it. If the device starts misbehaving, its CPU spikes, its thread count goes up, if it's suspicious, we can in I introduce an immediate alert so that you're aware that something in your fleet has changed. You know, the effect that we've seen customers uh, have as they, as they start using services like this is really mind-blowing, right? It feels like you were flying blind before you had security monitoring systems like this. And the same is true in the cloud. For example, if one of your administrative accounts that has access to your solutions or those devices is suddenly compromised. So for example, there's multiple logins worldwide. Um, we immediately detect that. We will issue an alert. You will know about that. And we'll also provide you information with the uh, transitive closure of all of the services and devices that that admin account has access to. The other part of that we do with Azure Security Center for IoT is we integrate it with Azure Sentinel. And Azure Sentinel is the first security information and event monitoring system from a hyperscale cloud provider that helps you protect your entire data estate from your cloud solutions, from your Microsoft 365 solutions, from your solutions running on other clouds or on premises. You get a single pane of glass and Security Center plugs in through that. The other thing that we've been busy focused and focusing on is protecting the smallest of devices. You know, many devices, be it Linux devices or Windows devices, they benefit from decades of innovation and security techniques, defense in depth techniques that frankly, the microcontroller space hasn't had. And so as we looked at this problem about four years ago, we realized that for the sum total of IoT devices that are gonna be connected, the majority of these are gonna be very tiny microcontroller based devices. And so last year we announced Azure Sphere, which is our first uh, industry-leading offering for protecting those microcontrollers. So Azure Sphere is actually three things. One, it's a set of, har of uh, hardware intellectual property that we license to manufacturers based on decades of research and real-world uh, experience in protecting devices. So it includes a set of sophisticated hardware capabilities, number one. Number two, we introduced the Azure Sphere OS, which is a Linux microkernel which is now serviced by Microsoft, just like we service Windows. And we keep that up to date and secure over the lifetime of those devices. And then the last is a security monitoring service that constantly monitors the fleet of, of Azure Sphere devices, where we find issues, recommend al uh, uh, alerts, and then provide patches for the, secure, uh, for the Azure Sphere operating system, along with your application. <coughs> and then at your request, can, up the, those, uh, can update those devices when your OT team signal that it's time to do that. So there's a lot of great examples of customers that are taking advantage of this. One of those that we announced recently was Starbucks. So Starbucks has a large set of connected brewers worldwide in each one of their stores. These are the ones where the baristas are making your drinks. So one of the things that they do is they, they were periodically rolling trucks to go download new recipes onto these uh, using a device that they would plug into a network port. The devices were never meant to be internet connected, but now with Azure Sphere, what they're doing is they've taken a network port with an Azure Sphere device, and they can plug that in, and that now forms a security boundary so they can remotely distribute those drink recipes to all of their brewers worldwide in their stores and have Microsoft stand behind the security and protect those devices. We've been busy in Azure Sphere building up a broad ecosystem of both silicon and hardware partners, and you see many of them. And we recently announced Qualcomm, which will be providing a broad set of cellular connected 
Azure Sphere devices, and that complements both MediaTek and NXP, which will be running on a broad set of form factors. Finally, I'm thrilled to announce the general availability of Azure Sphere. That will be coming in February 2020. And so all of those Azure Sphere hardware devices, our security services, will all be ready for general availability. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be part of this industry and to do our part to push it forward. It's amazing to see what everyone's doing and we really are seeing an acceleration in the industry. We can't wait to see what you'll build with all of these things that we're providing. Thank you, thank you for your time.